everyone. So this is Nisha again here. Um, so uh, I'm from NSET, uh, which is a uh, local civil society organization uh, working towards uh, disaster risk reduction and community resilience in Nepal. So our programs, our activities are basically uh, technology-based risk reduction activities. Uh, for example, like uh, the, more of the uh, physical interventions, uh, building code implementation, risk reduction activities, community-based risk reduction activities, preparedness, and so on. So. Um, we have been uh, kind of, uh, NSET has been implementing uh, this uh, USAID BHA funded uh, programs uh, since the past uh, 20 plus years uh, or so. And the recent ones are, are, I have listed some of the recent ones here. The uh, technical support to the municipalities for building code implementation, the BCIPN, which is the uh, different phases of BCIPN we have implemented, uh, we have been implementing. Then the peer program, the program for enhancement of emergency response, uh, which is a regional program. The Balliokhar uh, after the Gorkha earthquake, the housing uh, reconstruction technical assistance program. So basically you can see that it's a, uh, our activities are technical assistance uh, program for risk reduction. So uh, for those activities, uh, m &E has been an integral uh, component for all our program activities. Uh, I'll not go into the details of the m &E process here. Uh, like everyone else, we uh, conduct needs assessment, develop m &E plan, uh, indicators, uh, PIRS, we are all familiar with, design and design for the baseline and endline surveys, their implementation. Then we talked about this a lot uh, in, in the past days, implementation, reflection, reporting, improvement. So so uh, today, uh, uh, as Lloyd mentioned, uh, I'm going to share with you about the baseline and endline uh, surveys that we conducted during our BC, uh, BCIPN uh, program. So this is the, there are a lot of texts here. So this is the uh, approach uh, that we uh, followed uh, for our building code uh, implementation program. So basically to build a safe house, the foundation, what we uh, thought of as the foundation is that we need to raise awareness of the people uh, on how to build a safe house, on uh, why we need the safe house. So raising awareness uh, was uh, the first step. So for that, we uh, developed uh, various orientation programs, um, mass-based uh, community awareness programs, uh, uh, media campaigns and our orientation and all those uh, awareness raising activities and for us uh, like it's not only uh, the numbers we we don't only count the numbers but we wanted to see what uh, what the program interventions has brought in the change of behavior so to measure that uh, change uh, of uh, behavior uh, for uh, due to the raising uh, awareness raising activities uh, the indicator we set was improved perception score of the communities on uh, possibly of disaster resilient construction and the target set was a uh, 60%. Um, then uh, the next step was capacity building. We need to train the engineers, we need to train the nations, uh, the house owners to build a safe house. So for that, uh, to measure the effectiveness of the training program, uh, the indicator we set was uh, more than 60% of the uh, trained construction workforce have retained their knowledge and not only retained their knowledge but continue working in the field one year after the training. So that was the indicator set for capacity building. And then institutionalization, we need to have systems in place in the municipalities. Uh, the municipalities, uh, uh, just to inform you that in Nepal, the building code implementation system in the municipalities, uh, it's uh, mandatory, but it's not practiced yet uh, in most of the municipalities because of the lack of the uh, uh, human uh, trained uh, capacities in the municipality. So we, uh, um, we kind of uh, assisted, supported the municipalities in developing those systems. So we measured that with the indicator, uh, more than 75% of the program municipalities adopt the sustainable building permit process that are reflected in their periodic plans and budget. So after we did this in 30 municipalities and basically the ultimate goal was the buildings are constructed, uh, buildings constructed in the field are um, compliant to the national building code. So uh, the indicator we set was uh, more than 60% of the new buildings that are constructed are in compliance to the uh, National Building Code. So uh, these are the um, um, indicators uh, that uh, some of the key indicators that we set uh, for the uh, BCIPN program and uh, various surveys, uh, we designed various surveys to measure those indicators. So for the, uh, uh, to measure the effectiveness of the training, retention surveys uh, were conducted uh, to assess the knowledge, uh, pretest, 
posters was there during the uh, training and then we again went back after the we also conducted the post training assessment uh, where we uh, uh, assess the, their knowledge and also uh, their continuation in profession. Are they still working in the same field or not? And uh, is there any uh, uh, changes in their behavior? Are they satisfied with their uh, job? Is there any changes in their social status, their economic status after the training? So we assess that as well. Uh, for the institutionalization process in the municipalities, uh, we did the uh, building code um, implementation status survey. Uh, and all these uh, surveys were done uh, both uh, in the baseline and end line and uh, to measure the um, improved uh, perception score of the community that is the uh, improved level of awareness of the community we did this uh, risk perception survey and for the um, we, for the uh, buildings constructed in the field, we also did this uh, building compliance uh, survey. Basically, the, our engineers went to the field, uh, they assessed the drawings of the buildings and also went to the field for the uh, verification if they are followed according to the code or not. So uh, due to the time, I will not go into all those uh, these surveys that we conducted. So I'll basically focus on two of the surveys uh, that we uh, conducted uh, during uh, our program. So one of the survey uh, was the building code implementation survey uh, that we did to measure the change in the capacity of the municipalities for building code implementation in terms of institutionalization, technical uh, capacity and uh, the budget allocated for the uh, building code implementation and we did this uh, baseline uh, midterm and end line and uh, both uh, quantitative and qualitative data were collected uh, for this and um, we uh, started the process with uh, developing a structured questionnaire and the questionnaire was developed by the mail team uh, but we um, you know we get got the support from the uh, program team and we co also consulted the senior experts at NSIT uh, to design the survey questions uh, because we need the technical expertise uh, for uh, this assessment so and then the pro uh, program staff were trained for that uh, because uh, due to resource constraint uh, we uh, the program staff uh, did collect the data uh, during the baseline and end line both the process. So then um, after that, a secondary data uh, were collected and for the secondary data, documents were reviewed, uh, the municipal profiles were reviewed, uh, we studied the websites and also did the telephonic conversation with the municipalities. And then uh, exploratory uh, visit to the uh, municipalities was uh, done where interaction, we conducted interaction meetings and collected all the required uh, data according uh, to our uh, data collection templates. And besides that, we also did the uh, key informants interview and focus group discussions with uh, the engineers, uh, with the uh, municipal staff, with the masons, with the house owners, with the mayors, the policy makers to get to know about the uh, system uh, that they practice uh, in the municipalities. Then uh, we, uh, the collected data were analyzed and uh, reporting was done. Um, this is the, uh, the questionnaire that we use for the survey. Uh, I'll not go into the detail of this. Uh, so uh, the, uh, as you can see, this is the analysis and the result place. So um, the uh, questions were for the analysis. Uh, we did uh, very in-depth analysis of that, and the questions were basically uh, grouped into uh, three categories: one, the institutionalization; are the systems are in place or not in the municipality; two, uh, the technical capacities of the municipality; are there trained engineers, trained masons, or not in the municipality who can build uh, a safe house; and then uh, the uh, budget part: uh, has the municipality allocated budget for the uh, building code implementation? or not. So we assessed uh, the, our questions were grouped accordingly and we uh, gave the weightage and then a uh, score was assigned accordingly upon, on the importance of each um, indicators that we set for on these three criteria. So uh, this the figure uh, you can see the figure here uh, this is the result of our survey. The red one uh, in, the, uh, in the at the center is the baseline data and you can see that uh, the score was a very uh, less during the baseline in 2012 like uh, 
we uh, we scored it in the basis of five. So in 2012, it was like 0 0.3, 0 0.84 uh, in all the three uh, dimensions, 0 0.72, which increased a little bit increment was seen in 2014, represented by the blue line. And uh, 2000 and towards the end in 2016, the scores uh, increased uh, significantly. There was a systematic change in the municipality uh, that we have worked with. This is the aggregate score of the 30 municipalities uh, where we worked. And um, we also assessed the individual uh, municipalities also. And uh, individual municipalities were uh, also ranked accordingly uh, on uh, what is uh, their capacity in terms of building code implementation. So the data. Uh, of the baseline and about the end line, uh, we uh, were used uh, for the baseline. We shared the data with the program team and uh, to highlight uh, the uh, areas where they have to focus. Is it the uh, in the municipality? Is it in the municipality A? Is it like they have to focus on uh, developing the system, or they have to focus on the building the capacity, or what uh, what needs to be done in municipality A or municipality B as per the findings of the baseline? So that has been that was very helpful. Uh, for designing the uh, program uh, activities uh, for the for our program team. And then the, this data was also utilized uh, by the um, municipality to know their level and where they have to focus uh, to uh, to implement the building code. And we also shared this data with the governing body, the ministry uh, who looks after the municipality so that they can uh, assess this system uh, to uh, assess the municipality, use the system to assess the municipalities as well. So there were uh, challenges uh, faced uh, during the implementation so because uh, data collection with the municipalities was very difficult because the municipality didn't have a system of recording all the data at one place so we have to go through all the departments of the uh, municipality to collect the data so it was very challenging at that place so this was one of the survey and the next survey I'm uh, going to talk about is the risk perception survey this is the household level survey what that we did to measure the uh, change in the level of awareness of the people towards the earthquake safe construction. And we did it for uh, baseline and end line and both uh, household uh, quantitative survey and uh, qualitative survey was done. And for the quantitative survey, a structured questionnaire was uh, prepared and uh, then uh, uh, as a uh, for the sample calculation, we uh, sample size was uh, calculated uh, with the uh, sample size was calculated with the uh, with the um, uh, sampling uh, uh, tool uh, with a confidence level of 95 percent and error margin was uh, five percent, and we used uh, simple random sampling uh, based on the stratified systemic uh, area sampling procedure to collect the samples, and the whole population in the program was taken as a sample. Um, so for the baseline, uh, the a total of 9,800. Um, uh, surveys were administered in the program area, uh, but due to the uh, you know your, the human resource constraint and res uh, this uh, time constraint, we have to uh, squeeze a little bit in the airline survey. So the error margin was um, increased from five percent to ten percent, and only uh, three thousand uh, samples were collected in the airline survey. And uh, the samples were taken proportionately from each ward. Uh, we uh, uh, the the number we divided uh, equally in each ward so that we get the proportionate sample. And then uh, the samples also included uh, the representative uh, samples of people of different groups. Um, elderly people, different ethnic groups were uh, included, economic groups were in included, so that no one was uh, left behind while we did the survey. Uh, so for that, uh, enumerators were trained uh, by the ME team on how to collect the data, what are the, the data collection tools. So the enumerators, uh, basically the program staff, went through all the trainings to collect the data. And then for the qualitative assessment uh, for this, uh, we did the focus group discussions uh, with the community members to triangulate the data, to get the stories, uh, because from the uh, a quantitative part from the structured questions, we all only get the yes and no answers or the numbers. So we also did the focus group discussions to get their stories, uh, to to get to know how did they uh, benefited from the program, what challenges they faced. So we did the focus group discussions and this helped a lot. The stories and anecdotes helps a lot to, uh, uh, to triangulate our data and for the reporting. 
So for uh, the after that, for the uh, data collection, validation, and storage, uh, various uh, steps were followed, uh, like standard uh, guidelines, development of standard guidelines, Google users manual app, and uh, supervisors uh, were uh, for even for the enumerators on each municipalities, uh, supervisors were assigned so that they can uh, monitor the uh, enumerators and oversee uh, the survey process. And then a daily a log sheet was um, maintained with details of the respondent. Uh, so the once they go to the survey, they have to fill the respondent's detail uh, in the log sheet every day. And the real-time data was uh, uploaded in the Kobo and cross-checked uh, with the respondents. The, the mail team cross-checked with the respondents randomly over phone. And beside this, um, monitoring was also conducted uh, during the survey. So for assurance of the data quality, uh, we talked about a lot about this uh, day before. So 5% of the sample was collected randomly from these and cross-check was uh, done for the data validation. And the data collected uh, data were further analyzed, um, coded, analyzed uh, through uh, the SPSS software. So for the risk perception, uh, the questions or risk perception survey also, we uh, kind of, for the analysis, we kind of group the questions into uh, three categories, knowledge, attitude, and practice. And we uh, gave the different weight and uh, the scores were assigned accordingly. So the baseline uh, findings uh, for this uh, survey was uh, that there was some knowledge in the community and the attitude was very positive, but there was a huge gap in practice. The people were not practicing the earthquake safe behavior. The people were not practicing the resilient construction methods. They were not building on um, the complying to the building code. So, and again, um, we also uh, analyzed it based on the disaggregation. Men were found to have a, a favorable cap score, uh, but, uh, suggesting that we need to focus more on females uh, because their knowledge was found to be uh, lesser than the male. And um, uh, the, another thing we identified was we need to focus more on training and awareness raising activities so that those knowledge that is already available can be turned into actions. And uh, the another thing that we uh, suggested was we need to uh, design programs uh, specifically targeted to females, uh, house owner, housewives, um, oldest people, and uh, and the low income people because uh, the as per the economic uh, group, the low income people, uh, the the score of the low income people was found relatively lower than the high income people. So we need to focus on low income people as well. So that was the findings of the baseline uh, study, and. Uh, but uh, however, uh, the when we did the same study, same questions were used and uh, we did the, the online survey, uh, there we uh, observed a significant change in the uh, CAP score. You can see in the uh, graph, uh, the red is the uh, baseline score and the green is the um, online score. There there has been uh, increased awareness. Uh, there has been um, the attitudes what was because the attitude was positive in the baseline also, the attitude was similar. but a drastic change in the practice uh, was observed. They had been uh, following uh, the uh, building code practices, how to build a safe house, the pillar size. They were like, you know, they, they knew more about the uh, pillar size, the beam size to build a strong house. So that changes and they have been following that. So that practice uh, was uh, seen to increase uh, in the inline survey because of the program interventions. So there were challenges, yeah, as and uh, every study, uh, there are challenges. So there were challenges in this uh, as well uh, because uh, our uh, program municipalities uh, the areas uh, were in remote municipalities and it was very difficult to go there and uh, since it's in house to household survey it was very difficult to go there and collect the data and we had that human resource constraint uh, as well and uh, basically uh, during the uh, baseline uh, our program staff were uh, mobilized for data collection uh, but uh, during the end line uh, because we were ending the program and the field team has to return back like in some of the areas the local enumerators we have to hire the local enumerators and that was also uh, a very challenging uh, part on that as well so uh, this is uh, my last slide here so overall uh, lessons uh, learned from the survey uh, I have put here as large sample size uh, may not be necessary for the survey uh, actually i want to share here uh, uh, one of the experience that we had uh, during the uh, initial phase of the uh, building code implementation program we 
we wanted to like you know like we wanted to have a large number of population we wanted to cover each and every uh, people so that it becomes a representative sample and we ended up uh, collecting 40,000 data for the baseline you can imagine 40,000 data so it was, we had a very hard time uh, on analyzing that and collecting the data more than 400 enumerators were mobilized but that was a very good learning for us that we might not require that large amount of data. We can uh, do the sampling technique and uh, it can give a representative uh, sample. So, so that was a very good learning for us. And uh, on the later surveys, uh, we uh, uh, minimized the, we, uh, uh, our sample size was reduced. Uh, and another uh, lesson, important lesson learned uh, was uh, that local people uh, who knows about the area and the local language should uh, be used as the enumerators. When we send uh, enumerators uh, from the uh, head, head office level to the field, uh, the real data was not, uh, they did not collect the real data because they, do, uh, they were not aware of the situation. They were not, and the people were not uh, open to the strangers, you know, whenever they go to the uh, house and the strangers were there, like they don't, uh, they are not uh, used to uh, those strangers. So local enumerators have been, have to be um, uh, mobilized for the data collection. And yes, there. Uh, when you are dealing with large data, uh, there should be a system of data cross checks and continuous supervision uh, of the enumerators. And data needs to be verified. Whenever you are collecting the municipal data, uh, the data given by uh, the we observed that the data given by the mayors differs from the engineers, and uh, there was difference in the data. So we need to, you know, cross check uh, the data uh, that we collected uh, and then finalize the data. And another point uh, I have put here is that gender dynamics uh, should be also uh, considered in the enumerators uh, group. So these were some of the learnings uh, that we faced from this uh, two of the surveys uh, that we conducted uh, in the baseline. So I will stop here and uh, thank you very much.